Hi, my name is Brian Caffo, and welcome to this week's episode of Fully Cloudy. In this version, I'm going to talk about cloud frameworks for running TensorFlow and Keras through R. Uh, so this is going to be a very brief video because I'm basically just going to talk about a little uh, kind of quirk of using paper space. If you want a really full treatment of this, there's this great webinar from our studio. They have a wonderful webinar series um, uh, by An Andre de Vries. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right about training your TensorFlow model in the cloud. Um, let's see, my dog is sitting right next to right next to me right here. So if you hear her barking, uh, that's not actually me barking. Okay, uh, this video is uh, pretty detailed. He goes through some coding examples and uh, covers uh, uh, several different ways to run TensorFlow in the cloud, including uh, Google Cloud ML uh, using Amazon AWS and Paperspace. Um, I've tried all three and they're all great ways to do things. There was one little kind of sticking point with paper space that I wanted to, to talk about in case you wanted to use this solution. So the reason why this is kind of important is because managing a TensorFlow or uh, Keras implementation is a little bit frustrating. Uh, you're, if anyone's tried this, um, you know, you're constantly like updating packages and doing things like that. So it is nice to have sort of a, someone else do the systems administrations for you. So our studio, uh, in, in two of those cases, for the AWS instance and the paper space instance, RStudio is going through the trouble of doing the systems administration for you to do all the installation. And then, uh, of course, in Google Cloud ML, Google is doing it for you. Uh, so those are nice solutions um, to avoid all the systems administration that you have to do. In paper space, um, all you have to do is, uh, let's see, you go to choose region. You know, I, I live in the East Coast in Baltimore. Uh, what you have to do down is go, you know, they seem to mostly um, promote their Windows templates. Um, but, and, and I've used those a lot and they work quite well. And they, you get a browser window with Windows in it. And it, it's really, for me, it's the way that I run Windows if I need to. Okay. Um, you get this little unavailable message. You, you want to click on public templates and you can see our studio has created a um, TensorFlow implementation on paper space. Uh, now you have to request access to it um, because I think maybe there's still the uh, uh, paper space is still developing their, their uh, cloud uh, Ubuntu instances. Um, what you wind up with is a, a, you know, a virtual server. In this case, it's a Linux machine. Um, you can open up a desktop, and this is what I think differentiates paper space from the other solutions. So if you wanted to do an equivalent thing on Amazon AWS or any other server uh, type, any other cloud server, um, you would have to install, uh, you know, a, a, you know, you'd have to install the, the desktop on Linux, but then you'd also have to, you know, get VNC or something like that to actually uh, um, push the desktop lo locally. Um, so what paper space makes easy is they do this in a browser window, which is, which is great. So they do all of that for you. Um, however, the problem is, is for the Linux one, it just doesn't quite work as well as the windows one, the, the remote desktop protocol and windows maybe just seems to be maybe easier to work with or some, some reason, but it's, it's very seamless in paper space on Windows, um, and obviously it's a beta product in, uh, for Linux. They also give you kind of a nice cloud terminal where you can access your machine, but of course you have an IP, you can just secure shell into your machine. And that's what I wanted to talk about. So the way to make this functional, and, and I should say this is a GPU instance, and it's, it's a little bit more expensive than their CPU instances. So if you do this, make sure you have it set to turn off when you're not using it. And, um, you know, if you really aren't using it at all, destroy the machine because you can always spool up a new one as you need it just to keep the cost down. Okay. Um, now, uh, so because kind of working in the desktop is a little bit frustrating, what you want to do is you actually want to um, use our studio um, server and then only only use that. Um, that will, uh, you know, prevent all the sort of graphics transfer that that you know, doing the whole desktop would require. Um, the problem is, is the, there's, it's not exactly, it's not quite as easy to run our studio server through um, with this machine as a, 
as the server. So um, the way I've figured out how to do this is you secure shell into the machine and you forward the uh, 8787 port to um, uh, to one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one, which is your you know your home IP, okay, and then um, and I'll put the command in the in the uh, video notes below. I'll put the actual secure shell command. So I just used Chrome's secure shell, um, the, the, the secure shell, and there's a t uh, a line for um, uh, secure shell options. In those options, I put the, this statement, and then now when I go to 127 and that's 127.0.0.1. Uh, and I think you have to have it say 8787. And then you can see that our studio instance comes up. Um, it's a little bit, I've noticed doing it this way is a little bit laggier than doing serving it directly. Um, not a hundred percent sure why that's the case, but it's much more functional and usable, and it, it really is just fine. Um, uh, then, you know, using the whole desktop, right? You don't, you know, if you're going to be doing most of your development in R, all you need is an R development environment. You don't need all the other things that come with a desktop. So this solution works really, really well. Um, so just to reiterate, all, all you need to do is secure shell to your instance. And then, um, with the appropriate secure shell flags, then when you go to 127.0.01, your home IP uh, for the 8787 port, it's going to forward the relevant traffic and then your RStudio will be up and running. Okay, so that's maybe a little bit, a, a little trick that I think I, uh, um, that's useful if you actually want to do this on paper space. So I'm back and I'll hopefully have another video for, for you guys next week and I'll talk to you then.